Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Today we are talking about Asana. It's a task and project tracking tool, something like Jira but faster. And it is meant to be used by all teams like HR, project management, sales and not just engineering. So let's take a look on what technologies work in the background to make some parts of Asana work. First, let's come to databases. Asana's data model is quite complex. They have tasks which can be multi-homed which means that one task can be part of multiple projects. There are many organizational structures and task structures they have to model for. They also give an example of access control rules, like who gets to access a task. The person might be on the team which owns the task or the person might be assigned to the task or the person might be associated some way with the task. So there are a lot of complex relationships they have to model for and this is difficult. They say that all this might be queryable by SQL, but it would be a bit difficult to do it uh, in a performant way. To solve these problems, they created their own persistence layer called OKV Store, which is like a graph database and they built it on top of MySQL. Now with this, they can access the database and query it from an object-oriented programming language. They can declaratively define the entities and their properties and access control rules very easily. Now see, uh, the OKV store basically gives a graph kind of interface to MySQL and graphs are easier to model with object oriented languages by representing it with objects and relationships among them. By now we can see that when a company has to solve problems like this on scale, there has to be a lot of deep engineering. There has to be a lot of engineer solution um, that you have to apply to make your stuff work really well. Now Asana is also a real time platform. Like let's say when you add some comment on some task, that comment would appear in someone else's screen almost instantly. To have features like this, they have to create their own real time architecture. And let's see how this works. They built a new service called LunaDB to power this real time architecture. And let's see how this is working. LunaDB kind of gives a GraphQL kind of interface uh, for their data. If you don't know about GraphQL, it's okay. You don't really need to know about it to understand all of this. But if you know about that, then you, I think you can understand the resemblance that I'm trying to put here. So what the clients can do is they can send a request to the LunaDB service um, that give me some data and the uh, objects associated with it. So it gets it in form of a graph, let's say, right? Now the client has also subscribed to this data, which means that whenever there is some change in the data in the backend, it will be immediately updated in the client. And let's see how this is happening. Let's say I put some comment on some task that will be kind of a change uh, on their backend data model, right? So what happens is let's say I put the comment, they will send that change or that mutation in their language to a Luna server. Now this Luna server is also a custom service they wrote in Node to orchestrate all this process, right? So the Luna server would write that data to that OKV store that I talked about and that is their main application state store. Then the OKV store tells LunaDB, hey, I've got some updates for you. And LunaDB says that, hey, really, you got some updates? Okay, let me read it. So it goes ahead and reads whatever update it has. Now LunaDB got that change, like the comment that we made, and it is also now sure that that comment has been properly saved to the database, right? Now it can sync with all other clients, right? So when it reads from the OKV store that there is a new comment, it sends it to all other interested clients, whoever has subscribed to that data or whoever has subscribed to the data from that task, it is synced to those clients, right? Um, now this might be happening by some WebSockets kind of a network. They haven't really mentioned what protocol they're using, but I assume it will be something like WebSockets. They also haven't mentioned any interesting engineering that they did around this, around handling the events and then reading the data. They have mentioned that LunaDB's interface is very close to GraphQL and they even want to take it even closer and make it very similar to GraphQL. Right, so that was some parts from their backend. For the front end, they have mentioned they use React for their application. And you can see the lines of JS they have. So you see that this is the JavaScript one, which is kind of very constant, but TypeScript is increasing pretty rapidly, right? So you can see the adoption of TypeScript is increasing really fast. Uh, 
in instead of JavaScript. They said that they are also looking into integrating the builds that they have with Bazel to make it faster and to have bundle splitting to have faster page loads. Now I don't really want to go into this uh, front end terms specifically because I made this video intending to show more of the back end architecture. But as they have mentioned about the front end in their blog post, so I am just uh, giving you an overview of that. They have also mentioned that their Android and iOS apps are native written in Kotlin and Swift. So no Flutter or React Native or that fancy stuff here. So this is all I had for today. Do read the full blog from Asana, which I link in the description. And do let me know in the comments, what did you think about their architecture and about this video? Leave a like and hit the subscribe button. You know what to do. See you in the next video.